first, I think we need to talk about what the subjective test is. So one of the issues in uh, avoiding a, a preference is, is what took place consistent with what the parties were doing? You remember, uh, and when we were talking about defenses, uh, there's the ordinary course of business defense. Well, is what happened there something that fits within the prior course of that debtor dealing with that creditor? Uh, and if it's consistent with that, well, then uh, it looks like there's a defense there. And so that's the subjective test. And that's to be contrasted against um, what's sometimes referred to as the objective test. And the objective test is not looking at the relationship between that particular debtor and that particular creditor, but rather what is common industry practice within that particular milieu, whether it's you're dealing with um, a merchant that's uh, buying and selling uh, merchandise or construction company that's uh, um, buying uh, building equipment and then turning around and uh, paying for the equipment. What is the standard? So that's sort of the objective uh, uh, test as opposed to the subjective test. So within the context of the subjective test, uh, what a court will look at is whether the transaction was ordinary. And what does that mean? Well, did it fit within the prior course of the dealings between the two parties? Were the amounts of the payments pretty much the same as in the way things had been? What about the timing of the payments? And what are the circumstances surrounding the payments? So perhaps a little bit of an example might help. So uh, earlier I mentioned that a debtor might have a home mortgage and is making those mortgage payments just like clockwork every single month. And it's the exact same amount of money every single month. And the timing is, let's say it's on the first of the month just like clockwork. Well, this is going to fit within the subjective test of uh, the defense as an affirmative defense because here, the uh, recipient of the payments can say, hey, look, this is exactly how it's been from uh, the time this debtor got a mortgage. But if there is something unusual, let's say in that 90-day preference period, although the debtor was regularly making payments of $3,000 a month to that particular creditor, a month beforehand, the debtor made a $12,000 payment. Well, wait a minute now, that's a little bit different. That's not what we expect looking at the history between that debtor and that creditor. Or um, let's say the timing is off. At one time, it was on the first of the month. Now, debtor lets it slide 60 days, 90 days makes a payment, 120 days makes a payment. Now it no longer looks as if this is fitting within the ordinary practice between that debtor and that creditor. So those are the things that a court will look at to see, is this a preference or is this something that Congress has set aside as, no, this is not considered a preference.